Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Recently, the ROG Ally received a pretty awesome BIOS update that allows us to use third-party docks in full power mode with the Ally in dock mode. This also applies to different PD chargers, and basically now with third-party 65 watt or up PD chargers, we can do 30 watts or we can go into manual mode and go all the way up to around 52 watts on a nice little burst there, which is definitely going to give us the most performance we can get out of the Ally. Before we jump into testing, I did want to give you a quick demo and show you exactly what I'm talking about. So we've got all of these power profiles here, our windows, silent, performance, and turbo. And on battery, it does work out really well. But when we're plugged into the stock 65 watt charger that comes with the Ally, it actually gives us a little more TDP, which will unlock some more performance out of this APU. Now, unfortunately, without this BIOS update, a lot of the PD chargers and especially the HDMI docks that I've tested won't allow us to get that boost. I'll give you an idea. Now I'm on an old BIOS right now and I've just plugged in a third party 65 watt PD charger. And if you take a look across the board, the highest we can go is 35 watts and that's only a 10 second boost. And with the BIOS update, you can see that our SPPT now can go up to 43 watts and our FPPT, which is that 10 second boost, goes up to 53 watts. And yeah, this really does make a difference when gaming in dock mode. If you're interested in keeping up to date with the ROG Allies change log, I'll leave a link for this in the description. It's over on the ROG forum. But uh, right here, July 21st, we've got BIOS update 323. Starting from the bottom here, optimize performance in performance mode when plugged in. On future BIOS updates, the memory assigned to the GPU setting will not reset. So if you went into the BIOS and set it from 4 gigs up to 8 or even down to 2, it's not going to reset the next BIOS update. And I'm sure we'll get several of them. Modified minimum panel backlight from 25 nits to 10 nits. This is great for laying in bed at night. I personally turned the brightness all the way down on the Ally and it was still a bit bright. Going from 25 to 10 really does make a difference. And finally here, what we're talking about, added 30 watt support when plugged in to 65 watt or higher wattage PD adapters or type C hubs. We could always do this with the included 65 watt power supply, but I've run into a lot of power supplies on the market that were over 65 watts that just won't allow us to boost up to that 30 watt threshold when it's plugged in. But personally, my main use case scenario is basically dock mode with an HDMI adapter. And before this update, the only way I could really get full power out of the Ally while plugged in over HDMI was with the ROG gaming charger dock. Not a lot of people want to spend $50 to $60 on something like this, but it's great and it always worked. But now we can actually head over to Amazon and pick up an inexpensive HDMI dock. And most of them were made for the Steam Deck. A lot of them do 65 watt or higher PD charging. But the way Asus had the handshake set up with the charger was a bit wonky. It really only worked with their official chargers going up that high. But since they've released this BIOS update, we can use these docks and get the full performance out of the ROG Ally in dock mode without having to use one of their official adapters here. The first dock we're going to be testing out here is by Ivanki, and this was listed up on Amazon specifically for the ROG Ally, and that's one of the main reasons I picked it up. USB Type-C power in, three full-size USB 3 ports, HDMI, and Ethernet. It's gigabit Ethernet. 99% of the docks you're going to find online will not include a power supply, but luckily we can just use the one that came with the ROG Ally. 65 watts, and we know it works well with the unit. So like I mentioned, this one is listed on Amazon specifically for the ROG Ally, and the Ally fits in here pretty nicely. But it sits kind of at an angle. Personally, I don't mind this. We'll just go ahead and plug in that USB Type-C up top. And remember, we're using the Ally's included charger plugged into the dock. I also have a wireless mouse and keyboard hooked up, and HDMI is connected to this Pixio monitor. And there we have it. We're mirroring the screen. We can set it up to only show on the external monitor if you want to. In turbo mode, we should be showing around 30 watts. In operating mode, 30 watts. But the true test here is manual mode. When I've got this docked, I go basically as far as we can go with it. And if you take a look at our SPL, 30 watts. SPPT, 43. And our FPPT, 53 watts. So yeah, with the latest BIOS update, we can get full power out of the Ally with the dock like this. I had picked this up a couple weeks ago to kind of show it off in an accessory video that I was making on the ROG Ally, but we just couldn't boost up. Luckily, they've updated everything and we're now good to go. The next one I wanted to test out was this 12-in-1 USB-C docking station. I've had this for about two years and it served me very well. 
Lots of I.O., USB 2.0, USB 3.0, micro and full-size SD card reader, gigabit Ethernet, two full-size HDMI ports. And one of the best things about this is it comes with its own power supply and it does 65 watt PD charging. The only downside to using something like this with a handheld is we don't have a stand. But uh, if you don't mind laying this on the desk, it should work out really well. And we've got a lot more I.O. on this USB hub than we would with any dock that I've seen so far for the Ally or even the Steam Deck. OK, so we've got video here and this hub will do 120 hertz at 1080. I haven't tested 4K yet. But let's go ahead and check this out. So from our turbo profile, we are at 30 watts and from manual mode. Yeah, we can take this all the way up. I do like this one here due to all of the I.O. I mean, it's got everything you need, basically turns this into a full fledged PC and it has its own power supply included. The final dock we're going to be taking a look at is actually one of my favorites. It's by JS Aux and was originally created for the Steam Deck. Not a lot of I.O. We've got HDMI, two USB 3 ports, gigabit Ethernet and power in. But the best thing about this, in my opinion, is we can install an M.2 SSD. I've got a 512 gigabyte drive in here right now, formatted NTFS. There was really no setup. It's going to work as a USB drive when it's connected to the handheld. And it's awesome because you can set this up as an external Steam drive. That way, once you plug it in, you've got a lot more storage and we can hold a ton of games. I've seen these with up to a four terabyte drive in them, but uh, I've got a 512 gigabyte drive for testing right now. And it comes right up. My drive is detected here. But we need to make sure that we can do full power with this one, and it looks like we're going to be good to go. Really glad that they got this BIOS update out of the way. I was under the impression that ASUS really was kind of just trying to push their own ROG charger dock, you know, to make a little extra cash on top of the ROG Ally. But now that this works with the latest BIOS update, we've got much more flexibility when it comes to setting this up in dock mode or desktop mode. And I'll just give you a look at the kind of performance you can expect with uh, this thing kind of maxed out in manual mode. We've got Forza Horizon 5, 1080p, medium settings, getting an average of around 103 FPS. And if you take a look at Afterburner, we're right there at 43 watts, basically continuously with this setup. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in picking up any of the docs that I showed off in this video, I'll leave some links in the description. And if you have any suggestions for other docs that you've tested with this, definitely let us know in the comments below. I completely understand that first and foremost, the Ally is a handheld gaming PC, but now that we've got this update here, nothing's really stopping us from using this as a full-fledged desktop gaming PC. And in manual mode, with that TDP maxed out with what we can do here on the Ally, this thing is an amazing performer. If you haven't tried it out, definitely give it a shot. And like always, thanks for watching.